Hello, I'm John Ellerton, Head of Futures and Innovation at BT Media and Broadcast. And I'm David Jowson, responsible for our satellite portfolio. We're here today to tell you about two technologies, 5G private networks and low Earth orbit satellites. And then we'll tell you about what happens when you bring these two things together. So first of all, 5G private networks. 5G is uh, a very interesting technology and the broadcast market has uh, been excited about the possibilities of 5G since it was first talked about. We're still waiting for network slicing to become available, which will guarantee capacity across the public networks for broadcast production. But in the meantime, we and others in the industry have been working on private networks for 5G. Last year, in 2022, we worked on a couple of trials. One with BT Sport at Stonex Stadium in North London, where we used a, uh, a private 5G network built using neutral wireless equipment. And conveniently, we have a network in a box from neutral wireless just here that you can see. We built the private 5G network. Uh, there's uh, an antenna there, uh, a shot at the stadium itself. And that enabled us to make two of the broadcast cameras in the production wireless. The pictures went back over the 5G network to the production truck and then live on BT Sport. So that demonstrated that the technology is, is capable of doing live television production. So we then went again with the BBC at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham a couple of months later. And this time it was not in a, a stadium venue, but it was in a public square in the city. More challenges, more people, less controlled environment. We put a network, a private network behind the town hall and we illuminated this, the whole square, as you can see in the, the green here. Two cameramen were able to roam around the square and sent the pictures back over the BT network, over the internet, and into the BBC's one show studio gallery in Broadcasting House in London. And it worked. And the UK's population saw the Queen's Baton Relay broadcast over 5G. So both of these trials demonstrated that this technology is real and it works. So what are we doing now? We've done a few uh, behind the scenes trials to um, to prove what it is that broadcasters actually need from this technology. And one of the things that we're discovering is it's not just about forward picture, it's also about, well, everything else you can do with a camera fiber. So return picture, so the cameraman can see what's going out live. Camera control, so all the cameras can be aligned in terms of brightness and color. Tally, so the cameraman can see whether he's actually live or not with the red light on the front of the camera. Uh, comms so that he can talk to the, uh, to the director. We've also been looking at not just uh, small venues like football stadiums and rugby stadiums, but also um, golf um, venues, which are much bigger and demand a lot more in terms of radio power and complexities in terms of multiple transmitters. And we've also been talking to news broadcasters because sports is only one of the markets that this is suitable for. So we're getting to the point now where uh, it's ready to start turning into a product. We're going to build this into our production trucks. We're going to bring it to market as a capability that's part of our TV Outside Broadcast um, product that many of the broadcast market are using today. Ultimately, BT, the telco, understands 5G and we can bring this as a service to the broadcast marketplace to take the complexity away from 5G and enable the broadcasters to get the best out of it, this next generation end-to-end -end IP technology. Over to David to talk about low Earth orbit satellites. Okay, thanks, John. So, low Earth orbit satellites are our partnership with OneWeb. It's one of BT's uh, well-kept secrets that BT has been in satellites since the very start in 1962. We're very proud of our heritage, um, which is today managed out of our Madley Communication Centre where our design team and our service management teams are based. And combined together with OneWeb, we hope we have an exciting partnership for you. So why low Earth orbit? Well, traditionally satellites are geostationary. They're a long way away from the Earth. And there's a good reason for that. If you put them that far away, the orbit is the same speed as the Earth rotates. So they appear to be stationary. 
The disadvantage though is that the latency, as you can see there, is over 600 milliseconds. Low Earth orbit changes that, the satellites are a lot closer, you need lots more of them, but the advantage is the latency is much lower and it's now under 100 milliseconds. So in the satellite world, we're calling this a real game changer for us. And this very much complements our existing satellite portfolio and our wider connectivity portfolio, medium broadcast. So as I said, we've been in satellites since the start in 1962. OneWeb, interesting, they are focused on business grade connectivity. There are others out there, you might have heard of Starlink. At the moment, Starlink is the best effort service, whereas OneWeb is more focused on things that people need for reliable business connectivity. In terms of where OneWeb are at, they're well through the launch campaign now. They've launched 83% of their satellites, and that will take them up to 95% of their constellation. So it's well on the way to being completed. BT's done extensive evaluation tests at Adastral Park, at BT Madley, and at EE in Bristol on, on the system. And we're now working with early adopter customers on commercial networks. So what do they look like? So the early adopter terminals were these dual dome terminals you see here, similar to what you'd see in a maritime ship. We're now about to launch the flat panel antennas and there's going to be a choice of three different models. And here is the one from Intellion that's due for launch mid this year. The one that's probably more interesting for the broadcasters is probably the Kymeta one, which is the high end terminal designed for those high data rate connectivities. In terms of data rates, in the satellite world, these are amazing connectivities. Uh, if you compare it with fibre, obviously a lot lower. The game changer, 30 megabits on the upload, suddenly you can start to do multiple HD feeds over the satellite. Quality service is built into the platform. So if you tag your traffic, if your IP traffic is tagged with DiffServe, it's then prioritised accordingly across the network. When it lands at the satellite gateway, we've then got a choice. We can either go back into the internet or we can hand off into BT's um, dedicated networks, whether that be MPLS or it could be Medium Broadcast's own global media network. Finally then, in terms of timescales, I mentioned we're working with early adopter customers. We're doing commercial services right now in the UK. Um, Europe's also available and Canada right now. By the summer, OneWeb's hoping to have coverage expanded and by the end of the year, we'll reach global coverage. So, real exciting times. At the moment, we're doing data connectivity and we're just about to start working on broadcast contribution testing very soon. Okay, so, those are the two technologies. John, what if we bring them both together? And this is where it gets quite interesting because, as David just finished off there, thinking about broadcast television contribution over satellite, we've got two radio frequency technologies here that are both natively IP. If you put a network in a box at a remote location and you couple it with a low earth orbit terminal, you can have wireless cameras wherever you are connected back to your studio with nothing other than a satellite link it provides tremendous flexibility to be able to do event filming. We work together with a consortium of companies um, at the IBC Accelerator in 2022 to prove this technology. The consortium went to a um, location in New Zealand at a Maori festival, went to Kenya to a safari park, went to the national ploughing competition in Southern Ireland, and went to the Highland Games in Scotland. In each case, no connectivity, no fixed connectivity connecting the cameras to the base, no fixed connectivity connecting the base to the studio, but it all worked and they were able to go live. So this is just the beginning, but it illustrates the capability that we've got with all of these new, um, with both of these new IP technologies and what we might be able to do with it moving forward. So that's it. Um, we've, um, we're excited uh, to be part of this journey um, and we want to work with the broadcast industry to explore how we can put this to practical use for broadcast. Thanks everybody.